But this attitude of gratitude came. I had written a book or was in the process of writing a book uh, called Be Amazing or Go Home. And I had seven habits. And, and having this attitude of gratitude after the book came out, I added a supplement called The Eighth Habit, which is this attitude. And this is what I did for a solid year. Every day, I would write down something good that happened in business and something that happened personally. On the weekends, it was just personal, but five days a week, it was business and personal. You're listening to the Midlife Fulfilled Podcast, the show for men and women over 40 who want to thrive in midlife. I'm your host, Bernie Borges. I'm here to empower you to get the most out of the five pillars in midlife, health, fitness, career, relationships, and legacy. Subscribe to my weekly newsletter to get actionable tips to thrive across these five pillars. And now, prepare to be inspired, educated, challenged, or maybe all three on this episode of the Midlife Fulfilled Podcast. Shep Eichen, welcome to the Midlife Fulfilled Podcast. It's great to well, have you. I'm honored that I'm here. Thanks for having me. Fantastic. Well, Shep, before we begin, uh, why don't you share with us, uh, which decade are you in? <laughs> so yeah, I, that's a great question. I'm going to tell you the truth in a moment, but when people say, how old are you? I say, I am going to be 84 years old in 20 years. I was going to say, yeah, you just yeah. don't say when, right? <laughs> I, I like to pause and then they will, wow, this guy looks really good. So yeah. I'm in my sixth decade and uh, bald guys stay looking pretty young until one day it's like, what happened to this guy? <laughs> so I've looked <laughs> the same way for about the last 20 years. Well, uh, we haven't known each other exactly 20 years. I think we've known each other about 10, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, nine think. years. Well, this year will be 10 years because I think about 2014, you and I met. Yeah. Maybe yeah. 15. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we were doing some work, if you will, if you want to call it work for a, a large brand where we, we were reminiscing a little bit before we started recording about that. But, um, so a couple of things I've learned about you, Shep, along the way in those nine, let's call it 10 years, you are the ultimate professional in what you do. You, you. are an award-winning keynote speaker. Uh, you are renowned, uh, a renowned expert in customer service, customer experience. Uh, you've worked with some of the biggest brands uh, around the world, uh, and you've been inducted into the Hall of Fame at the National Speakers Association, which is no small feat. So clearly, professionally, you're very accomplished, but I've also observed, Shep, uh, just how you conduct yourself, how you build relationships that are truly, truly authentic. And I just started to kind of connect the dots, Shep, on your approach to life. And so I invited you on the podcast. And when we were preparing for this, you said, you know, I, I want to talk about gratitude, goals, and greatness. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Where would you like to begin the conversation on that topic? I mean, uh, let's start, uh, I mean, I, the attitude of gratitude is really important to me. Uh, we could start there. Uh, I, I think maybe goals are also important uh, to look at. Uh, greatness, I think, just comes as a result of the, uh, sometimes it's what you strive for. And I think greatness is in anything you do. Uh, I don't want to be seen as, uh, well, mediocre is, is not a word I love. I think it sounds kind of ugly to mediocre. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I don't want to be seen as anybody that does uh, less than great work and uh, just an attitude that I have. So you tell me what what intrigues you the most? Wait a minute. You're supposed to be asking me questions. Yeah. Well, um, OK, so that's OK. You're a podcaster, too. I didn't mention that. And you've been podcasting a long time. You you have you have a digital TV show. I mean, you know, you, you've really got it going professionally. But again, what really attracted me to you for this conversation is just how well-rounded you are. I'm using air quotes around that because you've, you've done great in business. You're still doing great in business, but you're also this friendly, authentic person who builds relationships and you're helpful to others. And because the Midlife Fulfill podcast is really about seeking and finding fulfillment across the five pillars, right? Health, Let's fitness, that, career, gratitude. relationships, and legacy. Yeah. So how, how have you been able to do both so well, kill it, crush it in business, but also 
just great at relationship building and, and just being a great human being and like fulfillment, like where is fulfillment for you in, in all that whole context? Sure. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the attitude of gratitude thing. I think that's a place to start with. It's also a strong way to come back and end it, it to remind everybody why this is important. Um, I'm a very lucky guy. Don't know how it happened. I'm very optimistic about life. I've been that way since I was very young. And I'm not saying I had a great life. I had a, I had a very, very good life with great opportunity that I took advantage of. A little bit of tough home life. Uh, you know, parents were divorced at a young age, which kind of freaked me out. And uh, But it all worked out. The, uh, the whole thing is, I guess there's a word that I like to use. It's resilient. And I'm resilient to negative things that happen to me and that I always try to find the positive way out. And by the way, don't know how that happened. Nobody taught it to me. But I look at the crap that was thrown at me at a young age. I look at the things that bothered or scared me at a young age and how I overcame them. And I'll get to the attitude of gratitude in a minute, but let me give you an example. And you might like this. We could riff on this for a little bit. 12 years old, well, actually 10 years old, I started doing magic tricks. 12 years old, I did my first birthday party magic show. I was paid to do this. And I was nervous in front of a bunch of little screaming kids. I mean, they were six years old. I was 12. So it wasn't like <laughs> I had to entertain these kids. But uh, I eventually joined the magic organizations, uh, the International Brotherhood of Magicians and the Society of American Magicians, and they had local chapter meetings. And I remember getting up to perform every single meeting, and I was scared. I was shaking. My legs would shake, but I would perform a new card trick that I learned in the last month. And I just think that I put myself out there and pushed myself in ways that broke my comfort zone, but weren't going to kill me at the same time. Right. You know, what's the worst that could have happened? Now, I did a bungee jump a, a couple, three years ago. Maybe it's longer than that. But I bungee jump, that probably could have killed me if things went wrong. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. You know, and I do some other things that people might consider a little dangerous. I did do a skydiving thing with, uh, which that's a whole nother story. I did it with my 69-year-old mother who since passed away, wow. not because of skydiving, and my 18-year-old son at the time. Wow. And uh, it was like three generations jumping out of a perfectly good plane. But uh, I just like to have fun in life. And a uh, great compliment years ago, I'm a member of an organization called EO, uh, the Entrepreneurs Organization. It used to be Young Entrepreneurs, part of uh, an extension, if you will, not really affiliated, but they're real close cousins of YPO, Young Presidents Organization. And one of the members gave me an incredible compliment when we were in a group together. And they said, you have like childlike enthusiasm, enthusiasm mm -hmm. for some of the most important things in business. And I'm thinking, wow, I think that's a compliment. So resilience, uh, excitement uh, to learn and, and work and do things. And that leads us maybe to the attitude of gratitude. <laughs> okay. So, you're nodding your head like you want me to go further. Yeah, so, yeah. No, if you say it leads you to gratitude, I want to hear about it because yeah, I, I know so, uh, my next question after that. So go ahead. Yeah. So the whole idea behind the gratitude thing is I didn't realize just how important it was to having a true positive outlook on life. And I can't remember how many years ago this was, probably more than 10 or 12 years ago. I was going to Orlando on a regular basis to do my keynote speeches, and I found a great driver, a cab driver, uh, who I would then call, and he would pick me up, and eventually he got a regular, like, uh, a sedan, so it was a, a, a more of a service than a taxi cab, and he would pick me up every time I went to Orlando and take me back to the airport, and one time, it was in December, and he goes, by the way, I'm giving away pocket calendars to my best clients, you know, these little calendars that had you open them up and you got the whole week seven days and little blocks you, you know what i'm talking about yes mm -hmm. great he said would you like one of these and i said i i don't think i have any use for this i mean i use my phone and i use my calendar I'm, why would i use this and i gave it back to him and right as i was leaving i said you know what i'd like that back and i'll tell you why i would like to write down every day something good that happened to me i'm gonna see if i can do this it's like a challenge starting on january 1st now Part of this thinking comes from going to something called the Strategic Coach, Dan Sullivan's program that I had. Uh, I went through it for 20 years. I love the program. And one of the things we always learn is that entrepreneurs, successful business people, we all have this great attitude and we're thankful for things that fall in our lap, thankful for the people around us that do great things. But this attitude of gratitude came. I had written a book or was in the process of writing a book 
uh, called Be Amazing or Go Home. And I had seven habits. And, and having this attitude of gratitude after the book came out, I added a supplement called The Eighth Habit, which is this attitude. And this is what I did for a solid year. Every day, I would write down something good that happened in business and something that happened personally. On the weekends, it was just personal. But five days a week, it was business and personal. So I you did it seven days a week? Seven days a week. At the end of the day, or before I went to bed, probably took me, well, at the beginning, it took me a little longer, but it probably took me two minutes to do. Why did it take me longer? Because I'd have to think about what happened to me good on a bad day or a tough business day. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, you know what? Uh, I had a good client call. I talked to Bernie today, you know, something good that happened while I was at the office. And then the uh, a positive thing that could happen personally, it's like, uh, you know, I, I, I talked to my daughter th uh, today. I haven't talked to her in two weeks. I, my wife and I went to dinner, you know, and we had a great conversation. It could be anything. It didn't have to be big or monumental. Well, here's what I noticed. Let me tell you about a tool that I can't live without because it's a huge time saver for me. Cast Magic is an AI powered tool that saves me hours every week. If you record Zoom calls or training sessions or customer service calls, or if you're a podcaster like me, let me tell you how you can save a ton of time like I am. At Cast Magic, you simply upload audio files or YouTube links, video files, even Instagram reels, basically any type of recording. Then Cast Magic goes to work generating a transcript, show notes, a blog post, a newsletter, and even an Instagram reel summary, as well as social media posts. Imagine uploading audio or video of coaching sessions, sales calls, customer service calls, staff meetings, recorded webinars, YouTube videos, and as I mentioned, podcast recordings. You know, prior to using Cast Magic, I was spending more hours producing each podcast episode than I want to admit. Now, I'm spending less than half the amount of time that I used to spend writing show notes, creating episode titles, writing social media posts, etc. Cast Magic is very accurate too. I usually edit the content a little bit to give it my style, but even with the edits, the time savings is still very significant. In case you're wondering, this is not a paid advertisement. I'm an affiliate. That means that if you use my affiliate link in the show notes, I'll earn a commission. But don't worry, the price that you pay through my affiliate link is not one penny higher when you use my affiliate link. And please know that I would not promote this product or any product for that matter as an affiliate without being a user and an avid fan of the product. I invite you to check out Cast Magic and start saving time with it today. My affiliate link is in the show notes for this episode. As positive of a person as I have always been, within two or three weeks, this habit made me more positive. <laughs> hmm. You can imagine. And it became really easy to spot good things even in the darkest days. You know, my mom passed away a few years ago. And I remember that day like it was yesterday. I was you know, in her apartment. My brother and his wife and my wife and I were around her. My sister was on the cell phone on the Zoom call. And she passed away right in front of us. And that could have been one of the deepest, darkest days of my life. But my brother and I had conversations. And I look back and you're going to think that's funny in a morbid kind of a way. But I found humor in that day or not humor so much as positivity. My brother and I, he said, she's not going to die today. I said, yes, she will. How do you know? I said, the dog's telling me. What do you mean the dog's telling you? The dog told me she was going to die. How did the dog tell me? Because the dog would not sit next to her for the prior three months, but that day wouldn't, it was clinging to her. And I knew the dog knew something was going to happen. So when I tell people that story there, it's sad, but happy at the same time. It's like my mom loved dogs. This is the most important thing to her mm -hmm. other than us kids, I would think. Maybe not. But here's the point of that attitude of gratitude exercise. Within a few weeks, I found it was so easy to find something positive, even on the darkest days. And I just started to find I was more appreciative of everything. I was nicer at times to people mm -hmm. when it was a tough day as opposed to withdrawing. And that's that's what that habit 
turned into. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it sounds like that's been life changing for you, but I actually, I want to come back to something a little earlier in our conversation. You you said earlier that you don't like the word mediocre. You want to be great at everything. I I want to unpack that Shep. What, what, what does greatness mean to you? Because Mm. is it not relative? What may be a great performance or great anything to you might not be the same as me and you know, the, the, the next person. Right. Right. So great question. I'll define it in the terms of amazement rather than greatness, because my word is I want to be amazing. Okay. You could call it, I want to be great. You, I want to be exceptional. I want to be outstanding. However you want to do it. I want to be successful. Well, amazement to me or greatness, your word is simply being better than mediocre consistently and predictably, because if I, I teach this in business, this is what the best businesses do. You know, I had a chance to talk and get to know Horst Schultz over a period of years, the first president and co-founder of the Ritz Carlton hotel chain. And I said, how do you build an iconic known for the most incredible guest service, customer service experience, you know, in a brand. And he goes, it's not what you think it is. It's not like going over the top all the time. You have opportunities to do that when they, when those opportunities fall in your lap, but if day in and day out, you're trying to figure out how can I just be a little better than average or mediocre consistently and predictably. And I said, give me an example of that. And he said, um, as soon as you get out of the car, one of our door, uh, doorman, door staff, door woman, whatever you want to call them today, goes over and says, welcome to the Ritz. They look at my luggage tag and they go, are you Mr. Hyken? Yes, I am. Well, welcome. Come on in. And we walk to the front desk and Mr. Hyken's here to check in. And as I come back two hours later, that same person that welcomed me at the door said, hey, Mr. Hyken, how's everything going with your stay so far? Using your name is an example of just being a little better than average. That's not over the top. Right. But when you start stringing a bunch of these little above average experiences together, it appears to be like they're over the top. And the reality is they're not. And oftentimes in business, if you just meet expectations consistently and don't ever let anybody down, well, they're going to think you're over the top as well. They're going to think you're amazing. They're going to think you're great. So my attitude about amazement and being great is simply doing the things that people expect consistently and predictably or being just a little bit better as often as I can. And once in a while, some opportunity is going to fall in my lap where I can just take that to a whole nother level. But I'm not looking for those rainy days to happen to, you know, save for a rainy day. No, I'm just consistently and predictably doing it right. As much Every as day. Can. It's standard yep. operating procedure for you, Shep. So, yep. okay. So, um, you know, in the introduction, I, I made reference to just all of your, well, not all of them, many of your accomplishments. You know, you've written multiple books. You've just done a lot that you've been very successful in your career. And it sounds like you have this this attitude of gratitude and this attitude of being amazing all the time in business, but clearly, and this is what I observed about you as a human being is that it's not just in business for you. It's just how you, it's your, your mode of operandi, right? It's just how you roll in life. So how does that roll over into your personal life, your family life, your friends, you know, and and was that a conscious decision or is it just something that's just now in your DNA? Well, I think I've always been a positive person, as I mentioned earlier, enthusiastic about things, have a joy for learning and trying new things, all things legal, of course. And uh, here's, here's, I think what happened is one day I realized that's how I'm wired. I did one of these Myers-Briggs type assessments Mm -hmm. and I've done predictive index and disc and all of these. I've realized this is how I'm wired. So how can I take advantage of this, both personally and professionally? And personally, if you look at, and every year, and I'm, and I'm in the process, I can even show this to you sitting here somewhere on my desk. Well, I won't need to show it to you. I have a, a, a planner and I have my 10 most important goals for my year. And every year, number one is health. Number two is uh, my, I, I call it, you know, my balance in life. Number three is family oriented. And th- by the way, they're in no particular order other than I just one day when I was running out and family means in in my life today, it means I want to take a certain number of vacations, which ties into work-life balance. Uh, I want to always appreciate my wife. I want to make sure I have at least five opportunities to be with my kids throughout the year because they don't live here in St. Louis where I live. And so if you look at those three goals, that comes before business. And by the way, if you're younger in life and uh, which 
most people, as you have shared with me, are in their 40s or older. But if you're in your 20s and 30s and you start to figure out it's important to focus on family at the same time you're focusing on your career and figure out a way to balance that, oh, my gosh, you are in such better shape. Yeah. And it's never too late to find the balance. But that's that's the first three goals that are of my 10 for the year. I also have what I refer to as lifetime aspirations. And health is always the number one thing because my family means the world to me. But if I can't drink the soup or eat the soup at the dinner table with them <laughs> because my health has failed me, right. it doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> right. That's why I list health as the first pillar of the five pillars, right? Health followed by fitness, which are very closely tied to each other, but yeah, I, yeah. I still break them out as separate includes pillars. includes workout goals. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So talk to me about your perspective on retirement. Ah, so I'm going to go back to the Dan Sullivan uh, coaching because he taught me the best definition of retirement, and that is simply doing what you love. That's what retirement should be. If you are uh, like I'm and, you know, I mean, I can't imagine stopping doing what I do and maybe doing a little differently, maybe doing it quite not, uh, not quite as much. But this is what I love to do. Why would I stop? getting up in front of an audience that they're still willing to hire me. Uh, you know, I mentioned the magic shows when I was a kid, I still practice magic. Really? I'm not going to stop. And by the way, if I decide to switch my performances from on stage keynote speaking for business, I've often thought, wouldn't it be cool if I just came up with a place that would hire me to do magic? Not, not like walk around card tricks at a table, but a good magic show. I also play guitar. You can see the guitars in my background. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and at home, I have 18 guitars. My wife says, why so many? They all sound different. Prove it. And I did. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, wouldn't it be cool if maybe I put together, uh, you know, a, a little band? I mean, I played in bands throughout the years, but wouldn't it be cool if I put together my band? And did, so I have lots of opportunities and things that I can do. I know I'm getting away from uh, the original question, which at this point, I've actually forgotten what it was. Well, and that uh, has nothing to do with my age. It's your, your, so a rabbit hole. The answer to my question about retirement is just do oh, what retirement, you love to yeah. do. Right? Yeah. yeah. And that's what yeah. it is. I love to play golf. And by the way, if definition of retirement for somebody is I have been working hard all my life, hopefully enjoyed the work. But I realized I would enjoy fishing or playing golf or doing something else more. Retire from that. And when it's when it's the appropriate time, financially, age-wise, whatever, move into doing what you love. And uh, I, I know there's an old quote that's like, if you do what you love and love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. And I would say because of that, I've probably been retired since I was about 22, 23 years old. Uh, I will admit there's about 15 to 20 percent of what I do on a regular basis that I don't enjoy. And that's the paperwork. Uh, I do get help doing that. But there's still certain things that I have to do and have to look at and have to consider. But if I could yeah. get rid of that, then gosh, how much fun would that be? Yeah. Yeah. I also know that one of your hobbies is hockey. Yes. And so uh, are you still playing? Up until, uh, yes, the answer, the short answer is yes. And here's a great optimistic story for you. Back in around October, my back started to hurt. And uh, we're recording this in, uh, in middle of January. So I don't know when we're going to air this episode. But uh, so I figure it's just in the last few months. And it hurt worse and worse and worse. And finally, in December, I went and saw a surgeon, a doctor, because the MRI showed I had a problem in my back. And I, he told me the operation I would need. And I thought that was good news because I have friends that have had the same operation that are still playing ice hockey. Mm. And he told me, you will never play hockey again. Mm. There's a pretty good chance you won't do some other things that you've been enjoying as well. I go, oh my gosh. And my wife was with me when we went to the doctor's appointment and she saw me go into this very deep, depressive state. It lasted about an hour and a half, maybe a little bit longer, but no more than two hours. And I came back, I said, I get it. And if I can't play hockey, that's fine. And she goes, what's made you change your attitude? I said, he didn't tell me I was gonna die of cancer. Right. Aha, so I found there's my positive outlook in life. Yeah. So the, the, as of, uh, so just, uh, I am uh, one month ago, uh, I had my back surgery and I am back to work. I have my 
uh, speech, first speech next week on stage. I'll be just fine. Still can't pick up anything more than five pounds or so or bend over and touch my toes for at least another uh, probably two months. But hey, I'm back. And in about uh, five months from now, I should be back on the ice. Wow. Five months. That, that is yep. fantastic. Well, yep. I, I didn't know that you had that, that procedure. So glad you're on the other side of it. And it just, it, you know, you said it earlier, health is, is so important and, and there are things we can't control. You know, that, that's an example, right? There are things yeah. that are beyond our control when it comes to our health. Now, in other cases, there are things that we can influence, but there's things that we can't control. And to your point, you're giving it perspective. You know, it wasn't a death sentence. It was, you know, I'll call it, I don't know if I can call it an inconvenience, maybe a big yeah. inconvenience. Right. And uh, by, by the way, I went to a second surgeon for two reasons. One, I didn't like the fact that he told me I would never play hockey when I have friends that have had similar surgeries that do. But he told me I couldn't get in for seven weeks to uh, get the surgery done. And I was in such pain. You mm. On a scale of one to 10, on some days it was an 11. Mm. And uh, so I went and saw another surgeon. There's a whole other story about that. But within 10 days, I was in the OR and pain is, at this point, I'm going to say 80% gone. And I'm, it's like the stock market. It may go up. 15% this year, but it's going to do this all the way up it's have high days and low days, but I'm going to get to that perfect spot. So that's why, uh, it, I, my death sentence of hockey, uh, became, uh, better when the uh, head surgeon for the St. Louis blues hockey organization, my second surgeon I went to said, we will operate on you and you will play hockey. And it's your choice, by the way, don't get into a game where you're going to get bounced around and checked into the boards, play with a bunch of old guys, who slow it down a little bit, you'll be playing hockey again. I go, yeah, score. That's great. That's great. <laughs> I, I used yeah. to play softball in a men's league and I played up until around 50, 52. I stopped playing because it was an open, uh, the age range was anything over 18. So we were playing against teams with 25 year old studs yeah. who were hitting cannonballs. And I said, no, uh, the, uh, this is too dangerous for me <laughs> at, at, in my 50 yeah. time, you know, so there's over 50 leagues and I yeah. play in a league, uh, a couple days. Uh, so two of my games, all the guys were born. Well, one of them's official 1966 or earlier. And the others are guys that are just pretty much our age and we just have, have band together. But then I also play with the 20 something year olds, but here's the thing in softball. I think there are more injuries in softball than there are in hockey. Um, more like t ACLs and, yeah. and, uh, you know, Achilles tendon and knee issues yeah. in hockey. We got to get worried about getting hit with an, a hockey puck. Right. I wear a full cage, so hopefully yeah. I'm not going to get hit. In it, but most of the guys that, you know, have scars, they're, just, they're not, their helmet doesn't have a cage. What are they thinking? Right. You know, we're right. all going to work. We're not playing this game professionally. Exactly. Exactly. So I want to begin to wrap here, Shep, and the, the, my biggest takeaway so far in our conversation is your attitude of gratitude. And I want to ask you, if you would, to maybe speak to the listener who's saying, I would love to have an attitude of gratitude. Uh, I'm not there. How do I get there? How do I adopt yeah. an attitude of gratitude? Well, buy a calendar, pocket calendar or regular calendar, and just start writing down one thing each day if you're working write down something at work and then write down something that happens to you personally every day and and recognize there's some good that will happen to you during that day even forget about the fun story i told about the dog but that day my brother and i were like this and i mean we're very close but yeah. i mean maybe we were more like this than, yeah. than yeah. this you know and our people are listening my fingers are crossed versus side by side next to each other you know my wife she was amazing uh, throughout that time. And I think about that. I go, how lucky am I to have those relationships? And maybe that uh, experience with my mom brought us closer together or just brought us at that moment so close together. My son came in the week before. And uh, this I love this story. It almost makes me cry. We went to go visit Grandy. That's what he called her. And he's a musician. And so we decided we'll bring our guitars and we'll practice and we'll sit there for, we always hang out and jam together. Let's jam at Grandy's in her room. Now she lays there. She doesn't talk. She doesn't open her eyes. She doesn't acknowledge that we're there. We know she's living because occasionally she stirs. And 
we, Grandy, Brian's here. And she opened her eyes for a moment and then closed them. And that was it. And then we started to play. And I looked at my mom and her hand was going back and forth to the rhythm of our song. She heard everything. Mm -hmm. That's a cool moment. That is a, an incredibly positive moment that happened uh, in a very dark time of my life, which was losing my mom. Yeah, that's a great story. Thank you for sharing that. So, Shep, I, I, I love the balance that you bring to every relationship, whether it's a business relationship or not. Uh, you just b bring this total balance of let's get done with whatever it is that we're here to discuss to get done. And, and you know, how can I serve you? And you do it with a smile and an attitude of gratitude. And, and I love that about you. If someone listening to this wants to connect with you, uh, what's the best sure. way for someone to connect with you? Uh, Hiken.com is my website or, you know, LinkedIn, just Shep Hiken. There's not a lot of Shep Hikens out there. <laughs> there's probably only, not a lot of Bernie Borgers out there. Yeah, either, there's only but, one Shep Hiken. That yeah. I know for sure. Yeah. It's not like Bob Jones. <laughs> yeah, nothing wrong with Bob Jones, but. but no, uh, no, nothing wrong with it all. Yeah. But, uh, but I know there's only one that. Shep Hiken. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, Shep, I, I just want to thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the Midlife Fulfill Podcast. You've got a great story. The best thing about it is that it's ongoing. And thank you for sharing it with me and my listeners of the podcast. Well, thank you for having me. My pleasure. And uh, let's stay amazing. Don't touch that dial. Before you move on with your day, now would be a good time to check out Cast Magic. If you record meetings, webinars, sales calls, customer service calls, YouTube videos, or a podcast like I do, Cast Magic can save you a ton of time with transcriptions, blog posts, newsletters, and more. Just scroll over to the show notes page and tap or click my affiliate link to learn more. You owe it to yourself to at least check it out. I think you'll be glad you did. I sure am. Remember, friend, if you're 80% fulfilled, you're doing great. If you want me to prove this to you, listen to episode 100. I'm your host, Bernie Borges, and I'll catch you on the next episode of the Midlife Fulfilled Podcast.